Today I'm doing my IGCSE at Excel Biology Drawings Part 2. So I'm going to be taking you through diagrams that I think you should be able to both draw and label. So we'll start with the white blood cells. There's two you need to know about. Number one is the phagocyte, which engulfs pathogens. Now the main thing to be aware of with the phagocytes is they have what's known as a lobed nucleus. And it's this lobing that enables them to engulf pathogens because it gives them lots of space to take that pathogen into the cytoplasm where digestive enzymes help destroy it. With the lymphocytes, which remember produce antibodies, there's no need for a lobed nucleus. So instead you end up with quite a large nucleus so if you're asked to spot these cells in a blood sample, this is the sort of thing you need to be looking out for. Now, red blood cells, they're adapted to transport as much oxygen as possible. If we look at a side view, they have what's known as a biconcave dish shape. So concave means it goes in twice, hence biconcave. Remember, that's going to increase the surface area to volume ratio. You'll find no nucleus, and that's to provide more space for the pigment haemoglobin to bind to oxygen. Now we're going to look at various types of neuron, starting with the sensory neuron. So things to point out here, you have what's known as a cell body has a long axon, which is insulated by this fat layer known as a myelin sheath, which speeds up how fast those electrical impulses pass along the neuron. And then these are junctions at this end, which will, if the impulse is passing in this direction, because it's a sensory neuron, this end will be making junctions with sensory receptors. Whereas the junctions up here will be making connections with neurons in the central nervous system. Now we'll look at the motor neuron, which remember makes connections between the central nervous system and the effectors. So in a nervous response, we're looking at the end response. Motor neurons have this characteristic star shaped where you find the cell body. Then you have your long axon again as well as that all-important myelin sheath. These cytoplasmic processes are known as dendrites, and they make connections with the central nervous system. Down here, you have axon terminals, which make connections with the effector. Remember, a muscle is an example of an effector. And in this case, the nerve impulse will be passing in this direction. Remember, between each neuron, you find a synapse, which is a gap. So if that's the end of a neuron, here's your synapse. And what you find here is that a neurotransmitter is released, which diffuses across that synapse. Now we're labeling the eye. So we'll start with the front portion of the eye where refraction of light takes place. It is the cornea. Then this gap, which allows light to enter the eye, is the pupil, which is surrounded by the colourful portion of your eye known as the iris. Remember, the iris contains circular and radial muscles. There's a liquid in the front part of the eye known as the aqueous humour. The liquid in the latter part of the eye is known as the vitreous humour. Light enters the eye via the pupil and is refracted again, but this time by the lens, which is held in position by suspensory ligaments and ciliary muscles. You have a black layer here that stops light bouncing around and reflecting within the eyeball. It's known as the choroid. The white tough parts of your eye, it's the outer layer, it's protective, it's known as the sclera. 
The super important layer is the retina because it contains rods and cones, which are both photoreceptors, which are sensitive to light. The nerve leaving the eye is known as the optic nerve. And then because the optic nerve leaves the eye, it means that part of the retina is called the blind spot because there are no photoreceptors there. And then although you can't really see it here, you have a portion of the retina known as the fovea, which contains a high proportion of cones which see in colour. Now let's consider the position of endocrine glands in the body. So up here in the brain, you find the pituitary gland, which is mega important because it secretes hormones such as ADH, LH, FSH. That's definitely more for you to know if you're doing triple science. This is your thyroid gland, which secretes thyroxine. It's located near your neck. These glands are to do with the kidney. Remember the word renal means to do with the kidney, so these are your adrenal glands. And they secrete, as you might expect, the hormone adrenaline, which prepares your body for fight or flight. The vine leaf shaped organ is known as the pancreas. That secretes hormones such as insulin and glucagon, as well as lots of enzymes, very important organ. Here's the ovary, which secretes estrogen, and the testes, which secrete the sex hormone testosterone.